Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland. This week I wanted to share with you some of the food prep I did for our latest adventure. A 1000 km hike on the Biberman track in Western Australia. We needed to pack food for 30 to 40 days for two people. Supplies were divided into eight boxes for nine sections, the longest being seven days. The food needed to be light, quick and easy to prep, nutritious and tasty. I hope you will find this video informative and that you can take away some useful ideas if you are going camping or for overnight hike or a longer expedition, if you are going off-road, overland, where you need to keep the storage and the weight down. I will explain to you about dehydrating food. Basically, it's removing the water content from the food so you can preserve it up to 12 months. I will show you what we had for breakfast, lunch and dinners and I will also share with you about 10 of my favorite recipes for lightweight, quick, easy and tasty meals. Stay tuned until the end for some of my favorite tips. Let's get started. Pre-made dehydrated or freeze-dry meals can be quite expensive. Preparing for a 30 to 40 days adventure for two people, this wasn't an option for us. I decided to prepare every meal myself. I shopped at the local supermarket, a budget-friendly store. I bought plenty of vegetables. I also went to the traditional supermarkets like Coles and Woolworths to buy some specific ingredients. I borrowed two dehydrators from my friends, the Escalibur with five trays, which I absolutely loved using, and the classic round one, five trays also. It did the job. Using a dehydrator is pretty simple. Place the fresh food on the trays in a single layer for better result. You must use the dehydrator in a well-ventilated room as well. Set the temperature and leave it on overnight or until the food is completely dehydrated, completely dry. This is extremely important. I used a mandolin to slice little and even pieces of zucchini. Just to give you an idea, 1.5 kg of zucchini reduced to 70 grams. Once they hydrated, they tend to stick to the plastic trays or even to the baking paper, so my advice is not to slice them too thin. I used baby spinach from a sachet, already washed. The spinach reduced to nothing. A 250 grams packet reduced to 20 grams. For the broccoli, cut into small florets. Put into boiling water until quite soft. Drain and cool it down. Spray it onto the tray and leave it overnight. I read online that using our hands could affect the conservation of the food. You can choose to wear gloves, but after all, I didn't find it necessary and I had no problem. Just make sure your hands are always clean. Four broccolis, 860 grams, down to 70 grams. Same process for carrots. This time I cut very small little cubes, as carrots can take longer to rehydrate. Cook, drain, cool down, and in the dehydrator it goes. 600 grams down to 40 grams. I also made some ribbons using a potato peeler and this one I didn't blanched. You can also dehydrate frozen veggies. At this time in Australia the green beans were about $25 a kilo, so I went for frozen to save some money. While the beans were cooling down I decided to cut them in half because they were too long and then I put them on the trays. One kilogram of frozen green beans down to 80 grams. Let's dehydrate some sweet potato. You can dehydrate mashed or pureed food, but you must add baking paper. Once the mashed sweet potato has cooled down, spread it evenly and try to keep it quite thin. 
Once the sweet potato fully dry, put it in a blender or nutri bullet and process until it turns to a powder. One kilogram of sweet potato will reduce to about 100 grams. Slowly tap the tray on the bench to assure an even distribution of the puree. Once again, I insist on how important it is to have the food fully dry. Half of a butternut pumpkin, 700 grams, down to 40 grams. You can also dehydrate canned food, like corn. I like to rinse it first and drain it well. Three cans of corn, 750 grams, down to 190 grams. You can also dehydrate lentils. This is a great source of protein. Two cans, 800 grams, down to 110 grams. I also dehydrated two cans of black beans but I found those harder to rehydrate. 800 grams down to 180 grams. I also tried baked beans, but to be honest, I didn't really like how it turned out. I think it's because of the sugar content. It was a bit sticky. This one is probably my favorite. Tomato sauce or pasta sauce. This one I would love to do it again for going uh, off-roading because we don't really want to carry those, those heavy glass jars. Highly recommend. It turns a bit like a, a fruit leather because of the tomato and the sugar content, but it works great. Once it's dehydrated, you put it in a blender and you turn it into a powder. So the jar, which is 500 gram without the glass it turned to be 80 grams at the end and this is all my collection of food that I dehydrated which I was very very excited and very proud of for the hike we didn't want to cook breakfast so we chose the protein bar option bare naked bars were 29 cents each although it tasted okay after a while I had enough of it we also packed just a few nice old bars. Those ones are way more expensive. I think they're $3 each. Another one that worked quite well, cereals. We enjoyed this one. I used 80 grams of granola per person. A pinch of cinnamon and coconut. Coconut is high calorie and lightweight. For 100 grams of coconut, you have 650 calories. So it's a really high energy food. And two tablespoons of full cream milk powder. Pour the mix into a vacuum seal bag and vacuum seal. So this is a little machine that I bought for the occasion. I really love this vacuum seal machine. It was a lot of fun. For this recipe in the morning, simply add cold water and breakfast is ready. Lunch was pretty simple. Tuna in sachets. We had wraps, lots of wraps with peanut butter or Nutella. Wrap and Nutella. I give this one a 10 out of 10. <laughs> mm. Delicious, huh? Good sugar hit. It's better than the, than the tuna from yesterday. <laughs> Picks peanut butter slug and wrap. Now the most exciting part, dinner. I will share some of my recipes, starting with this dal. Like I mentioned before, lentils are a great source of protein and they are very nutritious. For this recipe, I use red split lentils. Give them a good rinse, cover with water, add some bay leaves for the flavor as well as some stock cube. Cook for about 20 minutes. While the lentils are cooking, chop two brown onions. Crush some garlic, as many or as little as you like. Make sure you remove the stem in the middle. To cook the onion, I use a non-stick pan and a dash of water. I wanted to mention something really important regarding dehydrating food. Fat does not dehydrate. You must avoid adding any fat content in the food you're going to dehydrate, such as oil, cream, avocado, coconut, etc. Back to my onions. I added some ginger paste and the garlic, and if needed, you can add some water. I used some of the spices I had on end, like cumin, chili, turmeric. 
You can choose what you like and you can put as much as you want. Once the lentils are cooked, remove the bay leaves and drain it. Put the lentils back in the pot and add two can of diced tomatoes. Add the onions, give it a good stir and cook on low heat for about 20 to 30 minutes. I was too impatient and put the dal straight on the baking paper ready to be dehydrated. But that was a mistake. I'm gonna wait that it's gonna be cold because it has created too much condensation which is humidity and you want to minimize it. Leave it here to cool down and I will do it again. As you can see here, this is not ready yet and needs another few hours in the dehydrator. This is what you should obtain, some very dry pieces. Then you can crush them and reserve for later. Here is our dal and I will mix it with some coconut milk powder at this stage when the ingredients are already dry. Put in a vacuum seal bag and vacuum seal. You can also label so you don't forget what it was. I've got my boiling water here and tonight we're having spicy dal with coconut. So I'm just gonna put it up in there. All goes in. Give it a good stir and I would leave it to rest for about 10 minutes. And I'm adding some coconut oil. I think I added a bit too much water. Unfortunately, I used too much water and the first batch was too runny. The second batch was perfect and very delicious. This was our absolute favorite meal on the track, the good old spag bowl. You can easily dehydrate meat, but I didn't want to do it this time, so I bought a packet of freeze-dried beef at the camping store. I used some 2-minute quick cook pasta, 50 grams per person, and I put it in a sandwich bag, as well as the pasta sauce and the mince. 50 grams. This is a whole jar of tomato sauce, pasta sauce. A little extra that makes the difference. The pine nuts, parmesan cheese, and extra virgin olive oil. Pour boiling water over the minced meat. After 10 minutes, add the tomato powder and add boiling water gradually. Cook the pasta, drain them, and put them straight into the sauce. Mix well and add the oil, the pine nuts, and the parmesan cheese. Spag bowl, delicious. Nine and a half out of ten. This recipe is great to add a lot of veggies in your diet while on the hike. Peas, corn, beans, broccoli, mushrooms, carrots. For two people, quarter cup of each veggie. Basil, chili, salt, pasta, half a cup, pine nuts for the flavor. Tomato paste. Minestrone soup, parmesan cheese, olive oil, tomato paste. That's for two people. Give it a stir. And now I put my pot in my cozy. Leave this for maybe 10, 15 minutes. All right. Ooh. Tomato paste. Mmm. <laughs> That is awesome. That is very, very good. It's spicy. It's got the nice flavor from the Parmesan. The dehydrated food has rehydrated quite well. Carrots are a little bit crunchy. I'm gonna give that a, I give it a nine out of 10, Steffi. <laughs> I can't give it a 10 straight away, but it's, no, no, no. it's awesome. The pine nuts are really give it a very, very nice flavor. A nine. A nine also. One of our go-to, the couscous. I used pre-seasoned sachets from the shop, quick and easy. Although I use boiling water, you can also cold soak couscous. Tonight we're having couscous, which I'm excited about. Using some little chorizo, cutting it with my very little Swiss army knife. Couscous. Sausage. Olive oil. Give it a stir. And we'll be back in 10 minutes. Alright, see you soon. Nine point five awesome. for the couscous. <laughs> Instant mashed potato makes for a quick, easy and cheap meal. You can add small pieces of beef jerky to it. Peas and corn, some soy proteins, or even baked beans and gravy. 
Another go-to, industrial pasta. Adding milk powder, mushrooms and spinach. This one more on the healthy side. Broccoli and zucchini. Black bean noodles. They cook fast and they're high in protein. Lentils and mushrooms. Two sachets of miso paste. And I like to put all my ingredients together in a bag and vacuum seal it. So you've just put that miso paste into boiling, boiling water. water. Give it a good stir. All dehydrated by yourself again? Yes. Zucchini and broccoli. How long do we need to wait? 10 minutes. Oh, it's <laughs> hot. Mm. It's very different. I love the texture of those noodles and I love the flavor of the miso. A night and a half. This one, Steffi, I'm gonna have to give it a seven out of 10. It tastes too healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Remember the sweet potato and pumpkin powders? I mix them with some coconut milk powder, salt, spices, and a bit of instant mash. Vacuum sealing this one was a mistake. And this is why. It has compressed it together too hard. It's very delicious, very, very good. Just a shame the, um, the big rock solid piece there didn't rehydrate quite so good. Quinoa is a very nutritious seed, full of fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Great hiking food, great carb. I found dehydrated and seasoned quinoa at the shop. I added many veggies to it and it turned out great and tasty. Polenta. Polenta can be quite underrated. It is ground cornmeal, makes for a great gluten-free option, ready in an instant. To make it creamy, I include two tablespoons of milk powder. In this one, I included some soy protein. Tonight we're having polenta. Make sure you get all the corners. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a seven. Another pasta dish, super spinach. I was skeptical on how the spinach will rehydrate, so I decided to turn it into a powder. And it made for a delicious meal, full of vitamins. However, the dehydration process will destroy all vitamin C in every food. Time to wrap this video up, but just before, I've got a few tips for you. The individual sachets of oil, parmesan and nuts. I didn't want to carry a bottle of oil, and the good fat are essential to the diet during hiking. So I came up with this idea. I bought online 100 sample sachets for about $5. They can be filled with any ingredient of your choice. They can be sealed using the vacuum seal machine or simply with a hair strainer. Make single portions of snacks using the vacuum sealer. If you decide to vacuum seal your meals, be aware of the sharp foods that will burst the plastic. You can pack it into some baking paper first and your food will stay nicely protected for a long time. Make yourself a cozy. Right now I'm making a cozy to put around the pot to trap the heat and then we can uh, use less gas. The cool bag when you buy your shopping to keep it refrigerated. A silver tape like this. There are many videos online that will explain to you how to make a cozy. They will do it way better than me. Another important point is to test your gear. Make sure it works for you. You can also test your recipes, sample some of your food and make sure it works and that you like it. To clean your pot, you don't need detergent, you only need a sponge. And just a little sponge is enough. 
That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next week, back to our regular overlanding episodes with Grizzly and Bear exploring Western Australia. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.